Welcome to learning about high blood pressure because like your health is worth working for, not gonna lie. Tonight we're discussing new year, new you and answering your questions. Let me introduce Dr. Christina Miller. She's double board certified in emergency and integrative medicine. She is laser focused on nutritional science and health promotion. She totally supports lifestyle medicine and is currently at plant-based telehealth and is certified in 23 states. So if you're looking for a great plant-based doctor, she's the one, she is amazing. So plantbasedtelehealth.com. And I have the great honor of introducing your host, Jean Schumacher tonight. Jean is co-founder with Dr. Deborah Shapiro of The Pregnancy Advantage. And if you are pregnant or thinking about getting pregnant, definitely please check this out. There's so many resources and information for you. She works one-on-one -on -one with people to educate them on living plant-based. And you can connect with Jean at www.simplyplantbased.net where she has a ton of resources, recipes, there's so many videos and they're very entertaining. Recipes are amazing. There's classes you can sign up for group support and more coaching, whatever you need. Jean is a teacher and you can feel this on her website. There is a lot being taught and a, so much of it that she's giving away for free. You can also connect with her on her YouTube channel, Jean Schumacher Simply Plant Based. If you subscribe, you can get all her latest videos. So check her out there. Thank you very much. So tonight, what we're going to be just talking about this is for educational purposes only, you know, always seek the advice out of your physician before undertaking a new healthcare regime, you know, without question. If you're on medications, especially for high blood pressure, but also for diabetes, and there's a few others, you can get dramatic results with changing your diet, changing your lifestyle. So please make sure you are working with your doctor and you want to dive deeper. You want to do your own research. So we're here to introduce topics and, and talk about cases and help answer questions, but we are not giving any medical advice. So definitely talk to your doctor about that. And, and remember that as Jean always says, you only have one body, you don't get a do over. So make the most of everything you can do for this beautiful body that you are given. Right. So new year, new you, you know, there's that whole thing about new year's resolution and all that, you know, eh, let's not talk about that, but let's talk about short-term and long-term goals. Let's talk about it from another perspective. What are yours and why is this so important to have? I'm glad you asked this. You know, there's a lot of talk about New Year's resolution. And I heard so many people say, I don't write them anymore. You know, we do them for the first week of January, two weeks, and they fall off, right? And so, so many people that I know have stopped writing their resolutions. But I look at it a little differently. The end of the year, for me, is a good chance to look at what happened, what the past year has brought. What kind of, what did I do? To, what did I pursue? What did I, what goals did I fulfill? Where am I in life right now? So it's a sort a chance to evaluate. And we're early in January. So if you haven't done this, I do recommend doing some journaling and kind of looking at where you are right now, what's going on in life. And we're talking about health tonight. So, you know, thinking about your health, what, and, and to look at your new goals for the new year. So, and I, I believe in breaking it down into short-term and long-term. So what are your goals for today? What are your goals for this week? What are your goals for the month of January? What are your goals for the year? And so, and I do this, I look at it. Where do I see myself at the end of today? I'm going to bed early after this is done, doing my deep breathing, my relaxation activities. I'm going to have a nice quiet evening. And then where do I see myself at the end of the week? What goals am I going to work on? And, and I journal these, where am I going to be at the end of each month? What are my goals that I can break down that I work at day by day? And that's what I think goals are so important so that you're not just oh, I want to be healthy this year. I want to be thin this year. Well, specific goals, we focus in on them and, and we can really put our energy there. What are your thoughts on that, Jean? Well, you like to journal. I'm more, I have a vision board. And not only do mm. I have a vision board, but I have a vision journal, oh. okay? And I got this on, on Amazon and it was broken down into four sections. And so like, I'll put on pictures of what it is I want to accomplish you know, and it has broken down into four sections. So like one section is like my personal life, one's family and, you know, one's things that I want to accomplish. And so I take pictures and I put it in there and, you know, and when I thank, you know, when I get it done, when I accomplish it, I have these little stickers. Thank you. Cause I, I say, well, thank uh, you I to the that. universe, you know, uh, but I also have a vision bulletin board, you know, so that's the 50,000 foot view 
of what I want to accomplish. But then the vision journal, you know, you journal by writing, I journal by typing it out or printing it and then gluing it in. And then I like write little notes underneath it. So it's sort of um, like journaling, but it's a, I don't know, I, I, it's more visual. I'm a very visual person. You know, most people are visual. We remember what we see more than what we just hear in general. It just, if it takes too, too much time for me or too much effort, by the time I find a picture and cut it out and glue it there or take a picture and print it out and glue it there, it's more effort than I can just sit and write. But I agree, whatever works for each of us to set our goals, when we have specific goals, we we really, our energy goes where we focus. So if we're focusing on our goals, what we hope to achieve, what we plan to achieve, and then we work towards it. And I like to look at it at the end of each week and then the end of each month and what have I done? And, oh yeah, I forgot about that goal. I got to go back and start, you know, every day working on my deep breathing or every day, you know, working on connecting with someone a little bit more. And so I go back to those and those are the simple types of goals I might write for my, as far as my personal health, they, you know, they might be to eat more green leafy vegetables with my meals to spend more time doing yoga or deep breathing or meditation every single day commit to it spending more time connecting spending time outdoor in, in nature but making these our priority and making it part of my everyday life so what are some of the goals health goals that you might put in well for me you know another one you talked about is health and that's what ultimately what we're talking about tonight is health and you know like how is this going to relate to high blood pressure because high blood pressure is, is a symptom you have to get to the root cause why do you have high blood pressure? As admin for this group, I, I see the answers to the questions. And most people don't want to be on medications and they're afraid of having a stroke or heart attack or die, and dying, you know, and dying prematurely. And I see the answers to, because everybody has to answer, you know, the questions get into the group. So I see these answers and it's, mm-hmm. yeah, how does this, you know, and setting these goals is going to help you with high blood pressure. So let's let's talk about some tips that we can do to reduce high blood pressure. Number one, a plant-based diet. It's it's huge in terms of the impact. That's a what I call low front. You know, hanging fruit is just going plant-based. Uh, you know, it's a simple one, but yet in in reality, there's a lot to learn. And there's, you know, because we're kind of changing uh, everything that we've learned along the way about nutrition, you know, everything that you grew up with, it's like, yeah, that's so wrong. And and there's a lot of misinformation out there. So it's hard to know who to, to believe or follow, you know, because there's the keto, there's the paleo and, you know, and I see people talking about these things. So yeah, th- those can have an impact, but Here's the bottom line. None of those things are sustainable, whereas a plant-based lifestyle is. It is sustainable because we're able, it's what our bodies need. So the question is then beginning to heal what the underlying issue is for the high blood pressure. So for me, without question, okay, you know, whole food plant-based, but the other piece that I'm going to add is, you know, getting rid of the oil and getting rid of the salt. Those are two other things. The oil is going to sludge your blood and raise your blood pressure. So like if I go out to eat, which I do, you know, who doesn't every once in a while, they're going to have some oil. Okay. Let's just be clear that restaurants are not there for health promotion. They are there to provide a service, which is food that you will buy, that they prepare their way and make for you. So it's not health promoting. Let's just be clear upon this. So you don't know what the calorie, you know, what the quality is or the kind of food that's being in there. You don't know that, okay? So anyway, if I do go out to eat, invariably the food is gonna have high amounts of salt and high amounts of oil, and it will clog my blood and it will sludge it and slow it down, which increases your pressure, okay? And then you have the salt, which retains fluids. And then, you know, you become this big bag of liquid, you know, not that we're not, three quarters of us is water anyway, but it's just, you absorb even more. And so it takes me several days for my body to process that if I eat out. So, you know, consequently, uh, you know, COVID maybe has helped support this because I eat at home mostly now. I rarely go out, you know, I go to the grocery store and buy my food and then I go home and prepare it. How about you? What are some other tips that people can do to help reduce their blood pressure? Well, I wanna say a little bit more about diet. And that is in addition to avoiding salt and oil, which is crucial it's a whole food plant-based diet. So it doesn't just mean being plant-based. 
it's so much easier now to go out and buy crackers or to buy, you know, which seem healthy. They all, they're plant-based and they don't have, they don't have salt or oil, but it's not going to help us reverse disease. If we have something like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, cardiovascular disease, any of these types of things, they reverse with green leafy vegetables, with whole foods, right? With real vegetables, with whole grains. They'll reverse with rice perhaps, but not processed rice crackers or bananas are good, but not banana chips. And so I would add to your list, Jean, not to eat, to really work hard this year to avoid processed foods as absolutely much as possible. I get it. We're all in a pinch and there's moments. We're not talking about that moment. We're talking about what you do day to day. And I would say really stay away from the processed food aisle, even if it's plant-based, it's getting easier and easier to fall into it, even for me sometimes. And it, they're not healthy foods. So I would say that. And then I would also say sugar and sweeteners, they really got to go. They also cause inflammation in our blood vessels and they cause inflammation in our whole body, in our guts, in our mouths. They, they change the microbiome. And so right away, they're messing with us. And so if, you're, if your goal is to use diet or if your goal is to get off blood pressure medicine, honestly, then diet is the number one step. High fiber plant foods that are not processed is what I would go with and avoid these foods. I just did a fabulous interview with this guy who lost, he lost his job because he was, he was so obese that his blood pressure was uncontrollable. And so he lost his job. He was driving a truck and he lost his job. And so he went plant-based and he lost 200 pounds. Not only did he get a better job, but he got his blood pressure under control with no medication now. And, you know, losing that weight is going to help because you're not putting as much pressure on your heart, your arteries. Think about this. I mean, I personally myself have lost over 100 pounds and have kept wow. them off, you know, and I still have some to go because like my fat and I have been together, you know, for a long time and it doesn't want to give up the mothership, you know, and once you pass a certain age, you know, it's like, whoa. So, you know, there's, I'm still working, you know, it's, it's not, it's, it's a lifestyle, you know, that, that, that you're doing this. So, and it's a journey. So it's never done, you know, you're always on this quest for, for, for the best food and fuel that you can put into your body. So, yeah, I still have more to go, but you know, it's, it's a work in progress and I'm doing that every day that I possibly can, you know, to make sure, and I don't get that hundred pounds back, but think about that. If you, if you've ever gone, you've gone bowling, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. A 10 pound ball. 10 pound ball. Think about 10 of those that I was carrying around on my body. 10 of those. Think of that. Think of that. And that's a lot of pressure that's on your body. So if you can get rid of at least one bowling ball, you know, every once in a while, that's a good thing. But what I love about whole food plant-based living in, in this lifestyle is I did not have to count count because I've been on every diet known to mankind. I didn't do the tapeworm diet. <laughs> Did you ever hear about this? I have heard of people, yeah, eating tapeworms to help consume calories. I remember this. This is weird. On the Sunday New York Times, in the cartoon section, they would have like advertisements and stuff like that. And I remember to this day that they had, they advertised larvae tapeworms to lose weight. <laughs> and in my mind at the time, I thought, that's brilliant. Because you've got this oh, tapeworm no. eating all your food and then you don't have to worry about it because you're going to lose weight until that point where the tapeworm is just so big that you've got to have the tapeworm cut out surgically. That might be a deterrent to that. But anyway, I've done all the other diets and you, <laughs> you, you're you fine for a little bit and then you lose the weight and then it comes back with a vengeance with a vengeance, and then comes back even more. And that's even worse, you know, and this yo-yo, this whole thing causes it and we're starting to learn a lot about obesogens and how these are chemicals and you know what we thought was fat is not really fat and so yeah so you know getting that losing that weight and so what's so great about going plant-based first of all the food's delicious the food's amazing and once you start to learn to eat you know this way the variety is so endless it's ridiculous it can be too overwhelming some of the you know things and so what I emphasize is to find, you know, four or five, 10 recipes that you just can, you, wow, I could eat this every day. And I have certain recipes that I could just eat every day because they're that good. 
but you know, and that's what you're doing is you try and find what works for you and then, then eat that foods. And that will help you to lose weight. That'll help you to, you know, reduce your high blood pressure and you can get off your medications then. But and we always caution this because if you do go plant-based, first of all, tell your doctor, most likely your doctor's not going to know because there's a lot to learn. And some of the doctors don't keep up with, you know, how powerful nutrition is. Like Chris knows, Chris, I got to tell you, Chris healed lupus, lupus. She did. If you know anybody with lupus, it's a serious autoimmune disease, which by the way, Dr. Miller and I are working to launch the lupus advantage, but your, your, high, your blood pressure was high from the lupus, correct? Mm-hmm. And now it's under, yeah. Now it's under control, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I want to talk one more thing though about losing weight, Jean, that's such a good tip. And we sometimes forget to mention it. I always mention the lifestyle factors, but I may not directly talk about losing weight, but any extra fat cells on our body, like we all, nobody likes a little extra fat, right? We don't like how it looks or we want to look different, but it's not just about that. It's not just sitting there storing fat. It's actually an endocrine organ, which means it secretes hormones. And so it secretes pro-inflammatory hormones. And so if you have a high CRP or high chronic inflammation, if you have cardiovascular disease in any way besides high blood pressure, those pro-inflammatory markers are going to work on the level of the blood vessels and constrict them. And also when you have all this fat cells, blood vessels are going to go to all this fat cells, trying to give them nourishment, which is going to increase the blood supply going through your body, which means your heart has to work harder to pump it to more areas when you're carrying extra weight, which means that you can are you more likely to have high blood pressure again because of this extra volume of blood and this extra strain on the heart. And so these are reasons that losing weight, even like sometimes five or 10 pounds, it doesn't take a lot. So eating a fiber rich food and losing just a few pounds can help put, take so much strain that your body is physiologically going through. And for me, it was hard for me to change my diet. So Jean makes it sound like it's so easy. It's so delicious, but it was a little bit hard for me to tell you the truth. So if you're feeling like you, you like your food, you kind of don't want to do it. I get that. I totally get it. But when I learned this stuff about how the physiology affects my body, when I was like, oh my God, that's what it's doing. Then that makes me, once I have this information, then I'm going to seek out coaches or people to help me because I know I can't do it on my own. I know I don't really want to. I don't really know how to cook. I don't, I didn't initially think it was good. Like Jean is making it sound. And so I had to seek out people like Jean, who's got a great program or other programs, but I had to seek out things to get myself help because once I knew how important it was, it made a difference. And that's what I'm hoping you guys when you start to understand what high blood blood pressure really really is, what the extra weight really does, then it becomes a real game changer. And then maybe when you're, when you're taking pictures for your new goals or you're journaling your new goals, whatever technique works for you, when you're doing that, then you'll begin to think, okay, well, my goal is to lower my blood pressure and get off my meds. Okay. Well, how do I, what am I willing to do to get there? And I always said, somebody taught me, what am I willing to give up to get there? Right. I'm willing to give up my foods. I want to be lupus free. I'm willing to get my, my foods. I want to lower my blood pressure. I'm willing to give up my foods and I'm willing to take a course in plant-based. All these people say it's so great. I'm willing to try it. That's I committed to that. So for the first month, my goal was to take a course in plant-based to get a coach, to learn what I had to learn and get through that month. Okay. One month is done. What's my month, my goal for the next month? I, I want to lose five pounds. Well, how can I lose five pounds? I'm going to work with a coach who's going to make me plant-based, right? So we come up with these goals and this mindset. And once we have the information, that's how I think we build a plan to, and by the end of the year, we look and we say, oh my gosh, my goal was to get off my meds. And look, I was able to reduce it, you know, three quarters and I lost some weight and I was able to reach it, but only in looking at these small increments and working at it piece by piece, because it is hard and it does take motivation and, and continuous work at it. So. There is so much to learn. I mean, mm-hmm. there is. And so it's great to have a doctor who knows, going to know what you're going to be coming up against because you've been there. You've gone through this. You've seen the changes. You know what the body's going to, what's going to happen to the body. Because as you start to heal your body, your body's going to heal and you're not going to feel at your best. I think of it like when you skin your knee, you know, for that couple of weeks afterwards, that road rash, ah, oh, that's so painful you know, and you want to itch it and it scratches and you just, every time you roll over in the bed, it hurts. 
your body's going to undergo this and you're going to need to know this. You're going to need to monitor your medication. You're going to blood work and all this other stuff. So you need to have a doctor who knows that, but there's a lot to learn. So there's, you know, you need to have that, but you need to have the goals. Got to have the goals. If you don't have the goals, it, no, this is not going to work. You've got to have short-term and long-term goals of how you want to change your health. So that's step one. So once you get to that point, then you realize I have these goals. You've got to be able to make and set these goals and then be able to achieve them, make them so that they're achievable goals. I call them smart so that they're measurable. They're specific. You're measurable, right? You start to think about what a smart goal is. And you got to have this plan in place because you're going to hit obstacles. You're going to. And you have to know and have somebody to know how to deal with these obstacles. Like, like when you start to detox and as you start to lose your weight, you're going to be releasing these phenomenal amounts of toxins and it's going to make you feel like crap and you need to know and embrace what that is because that's your body healing it's like you're skinning you know, like when you skinned your knee you know it's you're still going to have a little bit of pain as you're healing that but once you heal it then your body's going to be fine but you need to understand because like we didn't come out of the shoot with a you know owner's manual for for this high performance vehicle <laughs> We didn't come out with an owner's meeting. I wish we did because that'd be, I'd buy that book, you know, and replace that because, yeah, this is a very complex, the machinery is so complex. And so there's a lot that you can do to change your health. So we know that obstacles, obstacles are going to come up. So what is one strategy that you have when an obstacle comes up? What, well, what, one, one thing I like to do is I try to plan some of the obstacles. So I may know already that traveling is a hard thing for me and socializing, getting together with other people who aren't plant-based. Those are two difficult times for me. So I plan in advance. Okay, well, I'm getting ready to go out. What am I going to do in advance? I'm going to eat before I go. I'm going to bring something with me. I'm traveling. What am I going to do? I'm going to look where restaurants are that I can eat along the way. I'm going to pack food with me. Um, you know, I'm going to use the Happy Cow app. So I, I, a lot of my obstacles I can anticipate. I already, I sort of know where I'm going to get sabotaged. I go to my book club and they serve something that's not plant-based, right? Or that's got oil in it or something that I don't want to eat. And those are moments, those could be become moments of weakness. And so I already know that I got to bring food or I got to lightly talk to the host and, you know, whisper in their ear, like, Hey, I can't eat oil or um, things like that and bring something separate or eat before I go. So I can tell them, no, no, I've already eaten. I'm good. Um, so I don't sabotage myself. So for me, it's planning in advance. What about you? Well, the big one is the food. You're right. And I would before, you know, when I was not, COVID's kind of helped that because I have a beautiful kitchen that's pretty well stocked downstairs. And so I waddle downstairs and, and make something down there that's whole food plant-based. But before that, when I was working and I had, a, I had to go out of the house and go to my job, I brought my food. I brought my food. And then I had things like the mini hot logic, which as soon as I got to work, I would put my food in there and it would gently heat my food up. So when I was had a break or was free, then I could go eat a hot meal because I like a hot meal. So I could eat something hot or then I would have, you know, like in the summertime, if it was, you know, hot, I'd bring cold, something cold, you know, a salad or something like that. But I'd have good food ready for me for as long as I, I was going to be out of the house. So just planning ahead, like you said, planning. But in this case, it's called batch cooking and I call it shop, chop, prep. So you know, you're going to have obstacles. So hopefully you've got some tips tonight. A um, couple of takes away from this. We hope that you will set your long-term, short-term and long-term goals, okay, of how you can get to the root cause of your high blood pressure, right? Because once you get to the root cause, then most likely, and again, you have to work with your doctor, then you can, you know, either modify or change or perhaps get off your medications. But that is something you've got to do because food can change it very quickly in some cases. So you really need to be monitoring that very, very carefully. So Doc, any final words in closing? Well, I love the SMART goals. So I actually am going to go use that in my journal tonight and do work on my SMART goals. So I would say to everyone, you know, whatever your goals are, let us go along with you on your journey. If we can help you, if you can ask us questions or whatever you need for support or encouragement, because it is always helpful if we do it together and we support each other. Absolutely, you're 100% right. 
spot on. If you have questions, you can tag either one of us into the group and we can get your questions into this because we like to get your questions. And that's what we do is we look for, we troll through the group and we look for questions that people have posted and then we answer them. So yeah, there's a lot to learn. And so hopefully tonight you've learned a thing or two. So Dr. Miller, always a pleasure connecting with you. Thank you. You too, Jean. And thanks to everyone who's tuning in or joining us. A pleasure to be here and be with everyone. Right. Have new year, new you. Your body's worth working for. Your health is worth working for. All right. Mm -hmm.